traders welcome welcome to another mighty video today is a phenomenal day in the markets because we have ticker symbol tesla surging up all the way up to 250 dollars per share it's an absolute amazing day not only for my day trading account but also for my swing trading account i'm going to do a quick review of where i'm holding a quick review of my swing trade i'm going to also do a quick review of the day trades that i took on it today as we are surging towards new highs so let's get started all right juan you said you could hear me juan 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 or anyone for that matter yes yes okay so all right let me share my screen here so you guys can see my entire screen and we can start this recap all right so as you guys can see from a pnl it is a green day i am up two thousand six hundred and twenty one dollars this is what i would call a base hit monday definitely very happy very very pleased with the way i traded specifically for the type of gap scanner we saw today before the market opened today the gap scanner was looking as dry as the de as a desert we didn't have anything gapping over 100 percent. we didn't have anything holding up all the stocks that were fairly holding up were these cheap ones kavl tgl not any particular breaking news not any particular continuation or sympathy plays there was just like they were just where they were just at the top of our scanners because there was nothing else up there so they essentially were, were the the least bad we had i took one day trade on this thing which was the pre-market high breakout believe it or not we're going to review this in the lecturing archive here at the end of this episode but believe it or not i made two thousand dollars on this breakout i bought ten thousand shares or maybe even more, I don't remember. We'll take a look at it here. I made $2,000 on this breakout, and then all throughout this move, all throughout this getting halted down, getting halted up, getting halted down, getting halted up, all throughout that chop, I made zero. Because I just continue to not like trading these. I feel like the price action is too irrational. I feel like the whole levels are too tight. The range is not enough for me to get excited about any particular trade is just a pure price action strategy in which you have to put your head down maximize your share size and try to get to a million one penny at a time this is a style that is very far from the way that i've been trading recently so to be honest with you took that one big trade got frustrated after making 100 bucks losing them making 100 bucks losing them making 100 bucks oh hold down hold up hold down hold up that i quickly decided to call it a day right and it's part of the reason why i'm making this coaching call so early if this is the theme if this is what we're going to see here today i don't want to be part of it likewise with penny stocks if it would have if this would have been a penny stock i would have probably walked away even earlier so took my two thousand bucks on it and and deciding and i'm deciding to leave it enough to leave it alone tgl is essentially the same thing same type of price action same price range very very tight hold bands just a choppy ride right i don't know this is is there money to be made here of course we have some very very skilled traders in the chat room that i'm sure made thousands of dollars on these on these stickers you know just buying and selling high levels of share size and capitalizing for from all these micro moves because at the end of the day there's tight risk volatility in here that i feel like if you know how to read price action, you can definitely milk it and capitalize on it. But, you know, I don't know. I like stories that have, that have I like stories and like trades that have more sauce, that have, that have more range, that have more meat in the bone. Rather than scalping away for, you know, a few pennies per candle. But anyways, so, you know, this was that. Tesla, my second biggest winner on the day, made $1,800 on it. So we did have breaking news today. Um, let's see if I can find this specific this specific label. 
Tesla stock is rising. Here's why. Okay, here it is. Tesla stock outperforms magnificent seven peers in the input market. What the hell's going on? We also have a few price target increases. Tudor Pickering gave us an increase in price from 120 to 131. Um, whoever this is gave us a price. Well, didn't increase it or decrease it. It maintained the price target of 245. But I think the big news is that we we beat we beat all the electric vehicle manufacturers in sales in China or something like that. Uh, the company typically releases data just after the end of the quarter, and therefore it could be announced in a little over a week's time. Mm -mm -mm. Hold on, where the hell is this thing? I read it this morning. Here's the company announced its study of what? Anyways, there's news. I forgot what they were. I'm pretty sure it's is is something regarding electric vehicle sales. But anyways, some of the day trades that I took on there today were an opening surge, right the second the market opened, we had this amazing surge that allows us to push and clear the levels from Friday. Friday, we had this pre-market high of 244. We had this pivot here before market closed. We had this pivot here pre-market. It was a very, a very obvious flat top breakout as we were bouncing from our big retracement on the daily chart into the open i didn't think it was going to be this strong so i actually missed the very initial opening search the breakout over 244 i missed it but at the very least i was able to capitalize on these initial one minute pullbacks uh oh and rt is sharing like a piece of news here Two back-to-back -back record months for GMCV sales. Everything striking distance of four to August. But that's bad news for us. We don't want GM to make sales. GM, we want Tesla to make sales, right? Mm, anyways, day trade number one. This beautiful one-minute pullback. Um, wasn't that beautiful, actually. It's more of a three-bar play. We retraced all the way down to VWAP after breaking out from yesterday's pivot. The fact that we brokered made me bullish into thinking that today we were going to see an uptrending type day. And once Tesla starts uptrending, every pullback is a go. So three bar play, took its starter position, was selling through highs. Second pullback, took its starter position, was selling through highs. Um, and then after the day went along, I decided to step away from Tesla because that's typical for me when I, the, the more I, the more, the more I overstand my welcome on Tesla, the faster I start giving profits back and the more frustrated I become. So for me, if I want to be profitable on Tesla, on Tesla, and I was checking my metrics the other day, I'm up a, th a few thousand bucks on Tesla when it comes to my day trades on this year. So at the end of the day, I've made money day trading it. At least I'm, I, at least I'm not wasting time on a dead strategy, but I'm in this journey of trying to master the art of day trading Tesla, right? And what I've keep learning is like the more I overstand my welcome, the more I lose. So took these two one minute pullbacks and then I left it alone. When it comes to my swing trade though, if we switch accounts here, I have two accounts with Charles Schwab. One, which is my swing trading account, and the other one, which is my day trading account, right? So my swing trade account is sitting up very nicely. I'm up $31,000 on this position alone. And I actually I'm holding I'm holding more than this position. So this is a quarter of a million quarter of a million trade that I initiated a few months ago on Tesla. And I'm going to show you my average cost. So I'm holding 800 shares at 197 on Josh Schwab. And this used to be this position, but again, I didn't went all in 1200 shares 
on Tesla blindly. Instead, this was a play in which I was constantly adding shares and constantly building this position to what it is now. Right now, I'm holding 1,200 shares at an average price of 189 but it's divided in like three brokers. So again, 800 shares, 197. I have another another 100 shares at 169. This is when this is when the swing trade had initially started. I actually had shares at like 145, but then I completely fumbled that starter position, and I sold at the very bottom for a five thousand dollar loss because I was terrified of earnings. Then this thing, like a few days after, proceeded to go all the way up to like 190. I felt like the biggest idiot at that time, but I waited patiently for the retracement and for the first pullback to come. We retraced to 170s, 165s, and then in there I was like, round two, let me give this crap another shot. I started accumulating 100 shares. I have another 300 shares at 171 in light speed. So here's 800, here's another 400. That gives me a 1200, 1200 share position, which is about a quarter of a million dollars. And I have a price, average price of 189. So 189 minus 250 is around, uh, what, 60 points? It's around like 60 points. So I'm holding 1200 shares, 1200, 1200 times 60. Maybe like 70 grand. I'm up like $70,000 on this swing trade, which is absolutely phenomenal. Right? But am I selling? Am I looking to take any profit? No, 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 not yet. Let's take a look at the daily chart here. I'm expecting for this thing to consolidate here on the, within this window and then retest 270s. Once we retest 270s, especially after the Robo Taxi Conference, I think that is going to give us enough momentum for us to at the very least retest $300. At that point, $300 is going to be acting as a magnet. People are going to be FOMOing, people are going to be chasing, Elon Musk is going to be fluffing up the stock, the conference is gonna go amazing, Trump is gonna get elected, we're gonna easily fly through 300. And then, you know, I'm up 100 grand, and then I'm up 125 grand. My goal is, depending on the conference and depending on earnings here that are coming coming soon i want to hear what is elon musk mission and what is his vision with robo taxi and depending on how all that goes i'm going to look to hold all the way up to 400 dollars per share and essentially you know double my money I, I came in with a quarter million on a trade and i'm going to be looking to get out with half a million trade or like three 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 quarters of a million trade right that's kind of like its worst case scenario. If RoboTaxi actually pays off and Trump wins and the Trump Elon Musk romance continues to grow, then this thing can go to $1,000 per share. And then the mate is going to be making some big money. But anyway, so that is, and that is the swing trade. Going back to the day trade. Again, it was some quick one minute pullbacks. Some quick one minute pullbacks right here, three bar play, and the second one minute pullback, retesting perfectly this level of support of 244. And it looks like this thing is wanting to break through 250. It doesn't want to wait, it wants to do it today. If it gets close enough to 249, I think we can get we can take a day trade here together. A quick breakout through 250. And again, Tesla, as most small cap stocks, they also respect psychological levels and 250 is a psychological level, right? Tesla maybe doesn't respect half and whole dollars because it's moving a half and whole dollar every second. But it does respect maybe like every every $100, right? Every, every 150, every 200, 250, you know that. I actually just want to buy this thing here. All right, let me pull up my level two here just in case we get close. Just in case we could close. I wanna take a I wanna take a sneaky day trade on this. So what's the spy doing? When day trading large caps, you have to you have to keep an eye on, on the spy. Mm, not doing much, but today Tesla simply looks like he's completely detached from spy. And he's just doing his own his own thing. All right. 
So hold on. So we're gonna take a look at this higher low here. And a lot of people ask me why the hell do I have this split when it comes to my share sizes? It's because these two are the bonds that I use when I day trade Tesla. And these are the bonds that I use when I day trade small caps. So I have a little bit of everything here. So where would I want to build my position? Um, well, it looks like it's gone. So it looks like I would have loved to add and, and get a starter position low here, 248 at the bottom of this one minute higher low. But if it keeps going and we break up over 249, then it looks like I'm going to have to jump for the straight breakout. And take a starter here, just in case he wants to break to 248. Uh-oh. Another trucker. I should have waited for that. Then here should be my starter. Not where I, not where I had it. Hold on. There should be my starter, right? Now we're we'll being the green. Hold on. Let me get back. Let me get back center on this. I'm take the starter here. Let's try this entire trade again. I think he's going to want to retest 248 to the dot. There it is. Adding a little more here. I want this thing to start bouncing somewhere here. Because I don't want to get too far away from high of day. That's our magnet right now. Attempting 249. I want to see I want to see this thing clear 248 248 and 8 cents. Why the hell are we struggling there? Come on, man. Added one more piece. I think I would consider myself full position there. And um now I'm going to stop out. It doesn't go right here. We'll see. You bastard. Well, I should have stopped out there, but... Now I want to give him one more... One more little leg. If we make a new low, though, I have to stop out. Mother trucker. There it is. Let's stop out number two and I haven't stopped out. Holy shit. We really have to reclaim 248, if not, like, you know, what are we doing here? Uh, 
This is the thing about large caps. It's like so much different. So much different. All right, well. You know, that is good, but this trade is definitely fumbled, though. The trade is fumbled. I'm closing it. I'm closing it right there, virtually break even. Maybe some of you guys are wondering, well, it's bouncing. Why are you selling it? Well, I already fumbled the trade. So, I should have stopped out a while ago, and I didn't. So getting out break even is like all right i fucked up i didn't stop out at the very least stop out and i'll break even so i'm gonna revalue reevaluate this thing as we get closer to 248 again if not i'm gonna leave it alone but anyways that was that trade i think it was literally break even let's see i was in a 248 22 0909 I wasn't break even at all. It was a small loss. But anyway, so that was so that was Tesla. Again, they trading the one minute pullbacks and left it alone. But now I really think we're gonna break 250, so that's why I'm trying to anticipate the break of 250. But regardless, let's get into the archives here for a second. Let's get into the live trading archives. I wanna show you that initial massive winner that I caught on. On KAVL. This is usually for MMU members only, the QA session and the live archive review. But well, today we're gonna go all the way for all for, for YouTube as well. Alright, so coming into the open. I had both both Tesla and KVL on watch for an opening surge. <clears throat> Tesla, the idea was to catch a dip and a reversal towards 244, which was Friday's high, and then KVL was an opening surge through 150. And let me see. This trade was crazy, honestly. Like I really got lucky on this trade. So as you can see, I'm already in 6,000 shares, and I think I started buying the moment the market opened. Similar to the way I traded Tesla here, I was just adding as I was seeing com confirmation. I was just adding, 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 and then I added once more here. I'm holding 10,000 shares. And I'm looking for 150, right? Here's the thing. I added even more as it came, as it came going higher. Now I have 13,000 shares. Here's the thing and how I like to trade now is... I like big picture trades. I like to trade against levels. I like to trade with a bigger picture idea in mind. Whereas before, I only traded price action. I only traded the level two. And the moment I was up five cents, 10 cents, that would be enough. And I would be just closing it, right? But now I'm like, why am I just closing it up five cents? If this still, if the big picture sell, setup hasn't even resolved yet right so i'm in thirteen thousand shares at 139.6 and i'm looking for the breakout of obviously pre-market highs which is 149 149 is most likely going to send us through 150 this that's what i love that's what i love the best when there's two very when there's two different setups so close to each other that within the same push almost more often than not both of them are going to get triggered so right here we have the high day break, the pre-market high breakout of 149, but that most likely is going to send us to the next setup, which is half and whole dollar breakout of 150. So I'm holding, I'm holding, we're churning. We came up to 48, we're we're dancing under the level a little bit. And just like that, we get the break and I start to sell. I thought I wasn't I thought I was too late selling. Because as you can see, we're breaking out and I'm holding 10,000 shares still. I thought I was going to be too late to sell after we reversed and did the false breakout because this is a large position and there was no way I was going to be able to sell 10,000 shares in one block for some reason in Charles Schwab. So I started to spam the sell button. I had 3,500 share blocks and then somehow we did another push towards 158 and that was enough time for me to get my entire position out. 
this is where liquidity you can start having liquidity issues to the point that you not being as nimble as you would have been with small size can actually start harming your strategy but we actually had like a double push so we broke through 150 all the way up to 154 and then we broke from 154 to 158 and that double push was enough time for me to unwind the entire thing and then look at this like look at that that is just brutal i i essentially you know picked up kbl from the street did the business and then and then like threw it out the car <laughs> right away like that is that is insane And as Chris people say, would say, there's nothing personal, it's just business. Casually buy 13,000 shares, get the breakout, sell, sell. All right. Now, good, goodbye, KBL forever. You can call down and get delisted. Now, that's kind of brutal. At the end of the day, we are sharks as traders, right? So, so that's, you know, that's what we do, especially when talking about small cap stocks. NVVE, NVVE. Let's talk about this one for a second. My biggest loser on the day. Why? We went from seven to almost to nine. We had some amazing range. This is the type of stock that I love to trade. This is the type of price range that I love to trade. Why am I red on it? Well, another very costly mistake here that you'll see right here. So as you remember, maybe like a week ago or two weeks ago, I had my biggest red day ever in which I was down $8,000. And most of it I was blaming because of a hockey error at a spot in my at a spot in a trade in which where I was trying to sell, I actually added by accident. And then that made me hold a huge position that then I wasn't able to unwind as we were flushing and, and failing under and failing and getting trapped on a hot down. So something very similar to me happened today, which is for sure going to send me into a trip of checking my hockey, checking my macros and making sure everything is fine because yet again today I fumbled a big trade because when I was trying to sell for some reason I was adding. So I think my hockeys are next to each other and I think I have to separate them more because I'm either clicking them by accident, either my macro is acting up, I don't know what's going on but this can't happen again because trading is very hard. And a small mistake in trading can be very, very, very expensive because I genuinely believe the reason why I'm red on this thing today was not only because I fumbled this huge trade, but also because the fumble itself threw me out of my game enough so that it changed the decision making within my trading after that trade. So I would like to think that if it wasn't for this trade, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have revenge traded backside or I wouldn't have been as eager to make the money back. I was just, I, I don't know. You know how trading is, right? Like one, one mistake on your trading session can throw off all the decision-making that goes after that and essentially fumble you and, and screw, up your, screw you up mentally for the entire trading session. But let's take a look at this trade. This trade was this, this was the trade idea, okay? Check this out, ascending support right here. I, I didn't have time to draw it. But it's right here, ascending support, right here. In my eyes, we were just going to reverse the entire thing right here, just like we did here and here. Ascending support, ascending support that I hadn't drawn, but I, it was so obvious in my eyes that I, I can see it there. So I bought 7,000 shares at 797. And that I knew was going to be full size, full position for that setup right me right there. And I was looking for the reclaim of eight to start selling and taking a little profit. So right now I'm in the green, I'm holding. And I think here's where I went wrong. I moved my mouse and clicked 2,800 shares so that I could, so that I could unwind at a bigger scale faster. Instead of just clicking 1,400 shares like seven times, I just wanted to have a bigger block in hand so that I would be able to sell bigger blocks faster. But I think when I came back to my hotkeys, I either landed in the wrong buttons or I'm not sure what happened. I sent an order right there on the ask. It didn't get filled. So I'm, st I'm still long 7,000 shares. And now we're balancing even more. 
811. This right here is where I meant to sell and not add again. Like the balances came and went. I'm already full size, 7,000 shares on an $8 price stock. Here, this should have been a sell order. And I don't know what happened. I'm using macros, by the way. I've made a video on how I use macros to day trade because I have I have very complex hockeys that Tinkerswim doesn't have integrated. So I'm making hockeys out of macros. It's an entire story, but I think that macros are, are going to come to an end here soon because this is the second time I'm having this, this silly mistake happen. But anyways, right here should have been me selling 2,800 shares, not adding. But anyways, I added, right? Oh, and this should have been me selling again. So I'm taking profits right now. We're going from 795 to 810, 815, 816, 817. This is me selling. But my fucking thumb or whatever, whatever finger I was using was resting on the wrong key. Or either my macros are acting up. I'm not sure. But I'm buying, right? Where I should be selling a one thing to be selling, I'm buying. And then I'm like, nice, you know, sold half. Now I'm going to hold half for the rest of the move. I glance down and I'm long 12,000 shares. And I'm like, oh no, what the fuck happened? And I'm like, don't panic right away. For a second, I was like, what if I get lucky and this thing rockets? <laughs> Just like it did on this candle. So for a second, I'm like, hold on. Hold on. Give me one second. And then I think on the next burst of green, I, I literally gave it one more burst of green on the tape. And that would and that was going to be the breaker to make it for this huge huge position. We had that, so I'm still holding, you know, trying to read the tape and be like, all right, so we're gonna go or not. Okay, so what I wanted to see is on this candle, just to go straight up. And then obviously the hockey acting up on me would have been a lucky bigger winner. But that didn't happen. So I'm like, all right, it had to go right here if I wanted to hold 12,000 shares. We started to go and we, di we just didn't teleport and we're back at eight. So I started unwinding, almost, almost hoping for not a flush to happen. And then I unwinded everything. I think it ended up being like a $600 loss instead of a, I don't know, a $8,000 winner. I was ready green on the ticker, so that's why I'm red on it. And then from there, I'm like, man, you got to be kidding me. What the hell just happened? And I think from this fumble is where I went wrong on MVVE. Because every 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 winning trade that I took after that, you know, I'm up $1,000 here after. It wasn't enough, right? Because I, I should have been up two or 3000 And that slight tweaking mindset is enough to send your strategy, you know, to the depths. And then I got caught on these two flushes. I almost got caught on the hold down. Well, I actually got caught on the hold down. This thing is halted right here. And I'm still holding 900 shares. It could have been worse than it was. Because I had like 3,000 shares somewhere down here. So I was able to unwind some. But then I started to revenge trade the backside. And I blame it on this damn error. So errors in the trading world are very, are very expensive. So we have to try our very best for we have to try our very best to make sure that everything under under our power is in control. We have another piece of news shared here by Broker Trades. I think this is the news that I read today, which is why it made me excited in the morning. Let's take a look here. Tesla delivers 400,000 sales. GM EV delivers 20,000. It's a race between four GM Hyundai and who wants to be Elon Shadow. So as you can see, when it comes to electric vehicles, General Motors, General Motors is essentially Ford, GMC, Sh Chevys. Those are GMs, right? They've sold fuck all combined. So three companies combined have sold not even 10% of what Tesla is selling when it comes to electric vehicles. And I think that's an article that came out today and part of the reason why Tesla is rocketing today. So very, very good, very, very, very mindful, very demure, if you ask me.
and it's part of the reason why we're probably going to see 250. But anyways, I think I'm going to open the floor for you guys and unmute Diamond members to unmute your mic and let me know if you have any questions or anything that you want me to go over in particular on any of the stocks I traded, on any of the trades I took, on the Tesla swing trade. Oh! And then something else, I started something else. This is this is more a gamble than a, than a trade. So I'm, I'm putting on a bet. I'm betting. I'm, expe I'm speculating. I bought a thousand shares of DJT. I bought a thousand shares on DJT. So you can see a thousand shares at 13.09. And I'm looking for the sneaky trade. I'm looking for the sneaky trade as, as this thing is selling off. Look at how much we're selling off. Like nobody's paying attention to DJT. I almost have to whisper because I don't want people knowing about this trade. You know, we're in this phase. We're in the low key phase in which we're selling off. We're making new lows. It's just looking very quiet and very dead. But what I'm doing is building a sneaky position, gambling, speculating and hoping that Donald Trump wins. Because if Donald Trump wins, this thing is at the very least going to go to 30. A quick 2x, a quick 3x. Why not? Right? So I started a position on DJT, 1,000 shares. I'm looking to buy up to 5,000 shares as we continue to drop lower. But this is, unlike Tesla, this is a really, really speculative trade. It is not a sync trade that, that has fundamentals on, behind it. It's more of a bet. It's more of a bet. It's pretty much a bet. I'm betting. It's a bet, right? Like how you, how you would bet on... I don't know, sports. So it's a bet. It's a bet. And um, I'm going to be talking about that specific bet in a different video. So we broke out of this wedge. Does that mean we're going to go up to 250? Maybe. Maybe. But anyways, this is going to do for the recap here. I'm going to stay back. I'm going to stay back with MMU members, going to do a little bit of Tesla day trading here, anticipating the breakout through 250. I'm going to do some Q&A as well. So if you want to join these calls, make sure to visit that first link down below. It's been the mighty, and I'll catch you next time.